this man has driven over a million kilometers to develop a new car. But his boss says it's still not ready. This is the story of an engineering crusade to create a car that will persuade the world's richest people to part with a million euros. A challenge that's pushing one of the greatest ever car designers to his limits. In a building that's more like an artist's studio than a factory, a man inspired by Leonardo da Vinci, a man who must be surrounded by the right smells to think, is pursuing his ultimate dream, to build a car that is both an engineering marvel and a work of art, an automotive masterpiece born of a pursuit of perfection so relentless, there's a danger it may never be finished. After a god of wind, this is the Pagani Waira. A car that has something so special, its creator believes that people will pay a million euros to own one. But why? <laughs> 10 a.m. The doors open and thousands of journalists and car lovers flock to the Geneva Motor Show. The star attraction is the unveiling of Horazio Pagani's new car, his million euro Waira. But there's a twist. While this may look like a finished car, it's not. In fact, despite years of development, it's far from complete. It may sound crazy to expect buyers to commit to spending a million euros on a car they can't even test drive. But not in the world of Orazio Pagani. Because this is the man whose first supercar, the Zonda, stunned the world on its launch and is considered by many to be one of the greatest sports cars of all time. So within days of the Waira's launch, Pagani's reputation alone is enough to secure the first orders. And as the Geneva Motor Show comes to an end, the worry for his team is not getting sales, but actually finishing the car so they can build and deliver them. Back home in Italy, Orazio Pagani has been developing this car for over eight years. In his pursuit of perfection, he is not a man to be hurried. Buongiorno, benvenuti in Pagani. Orazio personally designed his small factory, or atelier, as he prefers to call it. With his assembly room, component manufacturing, and design studios, all under one roof. This isn't a place where machines are bolted together by robots. Pagani's master craftsmen hand-build engineering works of art. Over the last decade, they've produced 150 unique Zondas. But now they're waiting to start building the Huayra, as soon as the boss gives them the nod. But that won't happen until this man's work is done. And 800 kilometers away in Germany, he's still got plenty to do. Because before any customer will be allowed to drive the Huayra, its extraordinary power and performance must be tamed. Over the last two years, Davide Testi has driven a series of Huayra prototypes the equivalent of 25 times around the world. I am the million kilometer man in the million euro car. And uh, follow me, and this is my office. Today, a full six months after the launch in Geneva, Davide is getting his first taste of a vital new addition to the car. Bosch's ESP, Electronic Stability Program, is a step on the road to a crash-proof car. 
The system goes far beyond traction control and anti-lock braking. With electronics that can assist or even override the driver to keep the car on the road. Straight away in this tight corner, I am accelerating fully and the ESP helps me straighten the car, keeping me on the road. But making this futuristic system work on this car is going to be no mean feat. Combining a very light overall weight with a massive 730 horsepower, even a racing driver like Davide must show respect. This monstrous 700 horsepower, 1,000 newton meters of torque is something truly awesome. It's an exciting challenge, but Davide is under intense pressure to get the job done. By October, the sales team has amassed 60 orders for the million euro Waira. A total that will take years to build. So despite the fact that testing is not finished, Arazio finally agrees to go into production. Down in assembly, a new chapter for his team of mechanics begins. And the first job is to get their heads around the new parts. Well, this here, this has all been um, prepared by the, uh, the guy in the stores. This is a like, control unit and the ABS. Um, obviously, you've got the uh, monolock um, wheel nuts here. These are the suspension arms. Perfect, so as you can see, everything's got their, their part number. Everything's marked with the, uh, the Pagani logo. Every wash is like detail, it's like a piece of, it's a work of art, every single thing. Today is a bit of a shock to the system for Dave Lambert, who's built 90 Zondas here in this room. It's all new for us and it's like, um, it's quite emotional really because now it's like nine years I've been used to be putting, putting together the, uh, the Zonda. So this is like, everything's, everything's new. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's like starting a new job. The whole thing will be held together with 1,200 titanium bolts. At 96,000 euros, that's more than the cost of most complete cars. But there's no manual on how best to build a wire. So Dave and his team must make it up as they go along. Our first part of the job is to like, build the, uh, the front and back chassis. The two chassis are lightweight frames made from a very strong form of steel called chromoly. These will later be bolted onto the front and rear of the driver's compartment. Next. Onto these frames, most of the heavy mechanical components will be fitted, including the hardware for the Bosch ESP system. But what to do first? That's it, we're just uh, learning that maybe, maybe we should have put this on first. Now we've just learned that maybe it's best to put the ABS on before the, uh, the steering rack. It makes life easier. While Dave tries to figure it all out, Orazio is never far away, keeping a close eye on the birth of his latest creation. One of the things we don't like about Orazio is that when we go out for uh, lunch, we're just about to clock out and he turns up. Dave needn't worry, though. Orazio is in no great hurry, because even though he has agreed to begin assembly, no customer cars will actually be completed and delivered until the performance has been perfected. Orazio's vision is to create a car with a split personality, a machine that can provide the legendary thrills and speed of the bad boy Zonda, but has a softer side car for all seasons, to take the kids to school or on a luxurious cruise through the countryside. So this is where the ESP really comes in. It's the key to creating this two-headed god. Davide must fine-tune the system's two very different modes. First, sport mode. In straight-line testing, with wet and dry lanes, Davide has no problem sending the car into spectacular spins without completely losing control. It's a boy racer's wet dream. 
yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I think this is... <laughs> Yes, you, you can never say how it will work. Yeah. But switch to normal mode, and the system activates full traction control and anti-lock braking. This is a bit like having Davide's brain embedded in the car, making it almost impossible to spin out of control. The car really reacts very well. It's very stable. And the ESP system really helps. It's helping me right now with the little corrections to keep the car on the road. The newest component of the ESP system is stability control. On a corner, the electronics can individually apply braking pressure to any of the four wheels. This helps tighter cornering. But it's also automatically triggered if the car's sensors tell it that you're losing control. Not quite crash-proof, but that's the thinking. Hey, it's a good job from Bosch, huh? Look at this. Oh, not bad. It's Mika to do a good job, I think, for the moment. After just two hours, Davide has burned through a 4,200 euro set of tires. And he will probably burn through many more. He may love the new system as it is, but experience says his boss may well have him drive another lap of the planet in the ongoing quest for absolute perfection. Work begins at Pagani every morning at 7.30 sharp. But there's no danger of Orazio ever being late because his house is inside the factory. He lives and breathes his work night and day. With his extraordinary passion for cars, Orazio is not a man to rest on his laurels. So in 2003, despite rocketing sales for the Zonda, he informed his team it was time to pursue a new dream. One so ambitious, it would put both his reputation and the future of the company on the line. Orazio started planning his perfect car with unique engineering features, immense power and speed, but also a softer, more feminine side. Most importantly, named after a two-headed god of wind, the Wira must assault the senses and create intense emotion worthy of a million euros. This is our mission, to really discover what it is that creates emotion in a client to the point of spending more than one million euros to buy what in the end is a car. When there are many other cars, they do everything and they cost 40 times less than a Pagani. For Orazio, to create that emotion means combining art and engineering, a philosophy that has evolved from his lifelong fascination with Leonardo da Vinci. Reading an article about Leonardo da Vinci, I found a statement where Leonardo said that art and science could walk together hand in hand. When I read that, it was like a window opened and I discovered the path I wanted to follow. In the design studios, Orazio put his team of young designers to work to create the blueprints for the Wira's 4,700 components. Many redesigned literally dozens of times until the boss was happy. The fundamental concept that Pagani communicated to me when I started with his company was his philosophy for work and his philosophy for creating. For him, it is fundamental that an object is both beautiful and, at the same time, functional. Inspired by da Vinci, Orazio is determined that every single one of those 4,700 components will not just be made of the finest available materials and be superb engineering, every last bolt and bracket 
must itself be a work of art. So Davide Pizzo has had to quickly learn to think both like an engineer and an artist, starting with the overall shape of the car, which is inspired by a great example of form and function in harmony, the wing of an aircraft. Quindi, lui si immaginava un ellisse so he imagined an ellipse in the front and an ellipse at the back that uh, were united in some way. This was to be the body of the car, onto which the wheel arches were hooked to the sides. From that simple sketch, the long road to the finished design began. From computer screens, to a series of scale models, to a full-sized wooden wire. Pagani asked us to completely clear the finishing area. So the machines were taken outside, the trolleys were moved, and he positioned the model of the car in the middle of the room. I remember that Pagani spent, I would say, many hours sitting in different positions around the car because he had to understand the shape of the car from every angle. It is only with the one-to-one -one scale model that you have a complete perception of the shapes and how the lines run. For example, this line that we have been watching for a long time should be more pronounced. At every step along the way, Davide and the design team must think how each small change will affect both the look of the car and its physics, the aerodynamics. Like a virtual wind tunnel, these computer graphics simulate airflow and highlight areas of drag and downforce. Later, the results can be confirmed in a real wind tunnel. For a high-performance car, you want to maximize downforce but minimize drag. The problem for Arazio is that most high-performance cars achieve the downforce they need with what he sees as a great big compromise, a rear wing or spoiler. The Sonda is no exception. At high speed, its huge rear spoiler helps glue the car to the road. But for his new perfect car, Arazio wants completely smooth, uninterrupted lines. To achieve this, he's ripping up the rulebook of sports car aerodynamics. With a solution, if successful, worthy of da Vinci. Inspired like the car itself by the wing of an aircraft, Arazio has designed a system of four independently operating aerodynamic flaps. And what better place to test it than at one of the fastest tracks on the planet? Four flaps are automatically controlled by the car's onboard computer, providing extra grip from downforce only when you need it. You can achieve a downforce using spoilers and wheels. But the problem is that spoilers and wheels are always on the car. Horazio's active aerodynamics remove that compromise. As the wire rockets off down the main straight, the flaps are kept down. This minimizes the drag and maximizes acceleration, and the low drag helps achieve a top speed of 370 kilometers an hour. But equally important to a quick lap time here at Monza is how late you can brake, how fast you can slow down. So as soon as Davide's foot hits the brake pedal, the flaps automatically rise. Just like the flaps on an aircraft wing, they become high drag air brakes, while maximizing downforce to get the most out of the tires.
but it's on the corners that the system really comes into its own, making full independent use of the full wing flaps. On a high-speed corner, a car tends to roll, the weight is thrown outwards, and the inside tires lose grip, meaning you must slow down or spin off. Horatio's active aerodynamics are uniquely capable of dealing with this problem. As the wire enters a fast corner, all four flaps rise to create more downforce for overall grip. But the inside flaps rise higher, counteracting the tendency to roll, which is not only much safer, it's also much faster. If it catches on, this innovation could change the look of all sports cars for the next generation. A technical solution better than a rear spoiler that also delivers the pure, uninterrupted lines that Arazio so wants for this car. And a perfect example of the philosophy of art and engineering that he's been pursuing since childhood. The son of an Argentinian baker, Horatio spent his childhood dreaming of building Italian supercars. In 1984, he got a job at Lamborghini and moved to Modena, where he quickly became an expert in a new aerospace wonder material being used in sports cars for the first time. Over time, I made friends with carbon fiber, an extremely technological material. Of course, at the beginning, it seemed to me like something from outer space. When he built his factory in 1991, Pagani started out as a composites company, designing and building components for the industry. Composites have unrivaled strength to weight ratio and the versatility to produce extraordinary objects of desire. So remaining a world master of this material is essential to Arazio's mission to create a perfect car. Today, the responsibility for keeping Horatio's composites on the cutting edge falls to one of his most loyal young protégés. I like working with composites because it is a very beautiful material. It's Roberto's mission to make the wireless composite components the best in the world. Starting with a unique soft fabric produced only for Pagani, carbon threads from Japan are woven together in Germany, then soaked in resin in Italy. Only Pagani knows the whole recipe. The result is our unique carbon fiber, our fabric. In a workshop resembling a Savile Row tailor, Roberto's process of laying up the fabric into molds looks straightforward. But attention to detail here is crucial to the end result. Then, each component is vacuum packed for baking. Here we are at the autoclave, which is an old friend to me, because without this machine, we would not be able to produce our beautiful car. As an expert cook, Roberto knows the exact time, pressure and temperature required to harden each part. After two hours at 135 degrees Celsius, these ones are baked to perfection. Roberto inspects every baked piece, and if it meets with his approval, it's sent off to the nastiest place in the factory, the trim station where Alessio needs full body protection and breathing apparatus to keep potentially lethal carbon dust out of his lungs. Before painting, the composite components are assembled into the skeleton of one of the first customer wires. It's a standard step to make sure that it all fits together. But here, there's a difference. This is where Roberto's meticulous care pays off, because every seam of carbon fiber weave must line up perfectly, and if it doesn't, the part will be rejected. The quality is so good, many customers choose to have large areas of polished, unpainted carbon composite as part of their final design. And of course, 
Horatio has approved each component as a perfectly designed piece of art and engineering, with exactly the strength, weight and aesthetic form he wants. This piece supports the seat from under it. This is a piece Pagani is very happy with. This is because if one day a client drops a penny and he looks for it under the seat, this piece is beautiful. As a committed perfectionist, Horatio's hands-on approach is understandable. But to build this car, he will rely on dozens of outside suppliers to build the remaining 95% of its components. And he can't exert the same control over them. Or can he? On the far side of Modena lies an aluminium factory. Ten years ago, this company decided to try and win Pagani's business. Little realizing just what they were letting themselves in for. Or how it would transform their lives. Not least, for this man. Welcome to Aspa. This is our old factory where we produce pieces for aeroplanes, products for the nautical industry and other products as well. It's efficient and functional, but also dirty, noisy and smelly. Not really in line with the Pagani way of doing things. But this is. Ecco, questo è il nostro nuovo reparto. To convince Horatio that they were the company to produce his aluminium components, Asper built a completely separate facility alongside the main factory, filled with state of the art machinery, light, order, and air conditioned sterile cleanliness. Even the neatness is higher than in the old department in order to produce what our customers are looking for, especially Pagani. As Horatio's collaborator, Maurizio must embrace his crusade for perfection. When Pagani designs something, Asper must work out how to make it from a single block of aluminium. Sounds simple? Not with Pagani. Early in the design of the wire, the development of this two-part wheel hub became a labor of love. When, after a year of study and work, the first component was created, Pagani had some doubts about it. I was not convinced, because there were many bolts, there were many components and parts that could break, and for me, it wasn't aesthetically the best. So the two companies worked together to develop a totally new single-part wheel hub. Of course, it seems a very simple result now, but it required deep research and almost one year of manufacturing. It's not been easy to make, to achieve this result. It may not have been easy, but the end result cleverly combines two parts into one, saves weight, is cheaper to manufacture, and, for Horatio at least, is worthy of exhibition in a gallery. But apply that approach to 260 different components, and Asper had their work cut out. Horatio has made Asper his collaborators, not his suppliers, and he has made them better. The facility they created for Pagani has now attracted over 15 new clients, and business is booming. For Horatio, this tough, no-compromise approach is essential to achieve his perfect car. So he spent years building up an international network of tried and trusted collaborators, working closely to develop his tires, engine, gearbox. In all, over 95% of the car. For the leather interiors, he chose a small company near Turin, who he felt were ready to think outside the box. Salt is a handcraft leather factory that's been producing luxury interiors for cars, private planes, and even helicopters for decades. And here, Horatio found another kindred spirit.
For us, it's very important to work with Pagani, but it is also a challenge at the same time. It is hard to obtain what he wants because he is a very particular person who always strives to reach the top, so there is no room for errors. The leather interiors will be a key part of Horatio's assault on the senses, vision, touch, and even smell. So from day one, he was determined to push Silvio out of his comfort zone. So before they came in, I spread some scent of a freshly cut grass, just like when you cut it with a lawnmower. It was a device to take the tone, let's say, of our conversation and also our souls to a higher place. In that higher place, they might be more receptive to the impossible challenge Horatio had in mind. Something quite feminine. When I told them what I wanted to do, I showed them a lady's handbag. This didn't fit well with the daily usage we have in a car, where the durability of the material has to be very high. They pulled their hair out and they said it was impossible to make a type of leather like this and use it on a car. It would be over a year before Salt came up with a solution. Hundreds of tests with the tannery finally produced a leather with the softness of a lady's handbag, but tough enough to satisfy Silvio. On the ground floor, the leatherwork is united with complex composite components that have been sent over from Modena. Carbon fiber seats, side panels, dashboards. Foam padding is applied and shaped. Then the bespoke leather skin is carefully smoothed into place, almost as if it's going back onto the animal it came from. It's stuck on with special maneuverable glue. When the leather's in exactly the right position, the glue is set with a hairdryer. I think that after all this work, we managed to reach the required level of quality. We're satisfied with the product, and I believe Pagani will be happy too. In fact, Horatio is so pleased with his collaborators' work, he displays their components like trophies in his art gallery of parts at the factory. Horatio may regard them as his art collection, but Dave Lambert's desperate to get them out of the cabinet and onto the new car he's assembling. The suspension pieces are the first aluminium components to go on. Racing style wishbone suspension, developed for weight loss, performance and aesthetics. This suspension here was actually developed first of all on the Zonda R, on the race car. It's very, very similar. It's almost identical to the Zonda R suspension. With all the mechanical components in place, the chassis frames can be attached to the top, which is the key component in the safety design of this high-performance car. The top is a protective monocoque for the occupants, made from the strongest composite material in the car, reinforced with threads of titanium. But each frame is attached with just eight titanium bolts. And this is uh, one of the, the chassis bolts here. Bolts that, when necessary, are intended to fail. In a head-on collision, the chromoly steel frames are designed to crumple, absorbing the energy of the crash in a very similar way to most cars. But Horatio knows that making a side-on impact survivable can be much harder. So in a high-speed sideways collision, those eight titanium bolts will snap, and the whole rear chassis will break away from the car dissipating huge amounts of energy so that the passengers have a much better chance of survival, cocooned in the carbon-titanium monocoque. A new day brings a new toy for the assembly team. A brand new gleaming 6-litre Mercedes AMG V12 engine, generating 730 horsepower but it achieves that using a device that most Pagani fans might not expect. Twin turbochargers. A 
turbocharged engine is the most efficient way to produce the massive power Horatio wants for the Wira and will help pass emissions standards to make this car legal for sale in every country in the world. But turbo engines have serious drawbacks. Pagani made his name with the naturally aspirated Zonda. Its powerful engine has great responsiveness and a mighty roar, qualities not normally associated with a turbocharged engine. So Davide Testi has spent many of his million kilometers working closely with AMG to adapt their engine for the lightweight Wira. Improvements to the cooling system, the engine management system, and the turbochargers themselves have produced a car with massive but responsive and controllable power. We arrived at a beautiful compromise, I'd say uh, optimum result, because even though this is an engine with 1,000 newton meters of torque, the engine is manageable, it's easy to drive. It really is a beautiful engine. But one very serious problem remained. Turbocharged engines are notorious for sounding weak and whiny. Just not what you need for a successor to the thunderous Zonda. So to solve this final challenge of creating his perfect car, Horatio went in search of a special talent, a man that can sculpt sound, a master in the dark art of exhaust pipes. He came to our door, rang and said, hello, I'm Horatio Pagani. We met each other here and it was a great encounter. We got on right from the beginning. He loves technology as much as I do, especially the beautiful things in technology. So Martin and his factory took on the huge challenge of making a turbocharged engine sound good. A turbocharger is a very efficient way to make an engine more powerful. It does this by using a fan driven by the hot exhaust gases. That drives a second compressor fan that pumps more oxygen into the cylinders, producing more power. The problem is that the turbocharger breaks up the flow of the exhaust gases, mashing up the beautiful thumping V12 sound coming out of the engine. It's like a nose being held, so it doesn't allow sound to travel like in a naturally aspirated engine. Martin Hagler specializes in making engines sound beautiful. But to achieve that with the turbocharged Wira, he's going to need something very special. Fortunately, he has a plan. All that you can see here are parts that are tuned exactly to the acoustics of the engine. And that's the basis for the sound. It is the same as the tuning of an instrument, like a horn. His hand-built exhaust pipes aren't anything like the steel ones found in your average family saloon. These are made of ultra-lightweight titanium and a heat-resistant aerospace alloy called Inconel 6. Often complex shapes, many of Martin's components require an ingenious process to form them, called hydroforming. The silencer is made this way. A straight pipe is first filled with water, then laid in a mold inside a hydraulic press. The water pressure inside is pumped to 1500 bar, which stretches the millimeter thick titanium into the desired shape. It's a very natural shape, very natural and stable. And when you lift it up, you notice it is not heavier than plastic. Already a thing of beauty, Martin has another trick up his sleeve to enhance the silencer still further. A trick that simply involves a dusty old oven. No chemicals or additives, just heat and precise timing. It looks like a magic trick, but it's a natural process. Together, Martin believes the 14 sections of pipe will deliver some stirring turbocharged music. First, he splits the mashed up exhaust from each turbo into two separate tubes. This smooths the quality of the sound. Then it passes into the silencers, 
which in fact aren't silencers, but the opposite, empty echo chambers that amplify the sound. Inside, Martin has left a small gap, like the hole in a flute or a recorder, which the now smooth air blows to create a roar. As always, the first to find out if this ingenious design has succeeded is Davide Testi. Driving the Waira for the first time, you have a feeling of something really massive beneath your back. And the loud noise of the turbos, if you close your eyes, makes you think of an aeroplane about to take off. For the car inspired by an aircraft, Martin has given Horazio a jet engine roar. With the delivery of the exhaust system, Dave and his team now have all the components they need to complete the first customer cars. The output from each turbocharger is fitted with a catalytic converter, and then the rest of the exhaust system can go on. Onto the chassis, the skeleton of the car, goes the wiring, the nervous system of the machine. Now work on the interior can begin. Polished carbon fiber panels and soft during leather to the customer's exact specifications. Finally, Roberto's outer composite body parts, the bonnet, doors, and side panels go on. And after three weeks of assembly, the car is complete. Which means it's time for Davide to take one last drive, to find out if the Herculean task that has taken him 25 times around the world is done. With turbocharged power and the ingenious exhaust, unique aerodynamics, fine-tuned electronics, and a set of Pirelli's finest tires, does it thrill with the thrust and roar of a jet aircraft taking off? A big sigh, and let's say that we are really very happy. I believe that the Waira is an air worthy of the Zonda. The million kilometer man thinks his work is done. But does his boss agree? Is he finally happy with these lines that he's watched for years? It has taken time and the years of development of materials to enable us to reach this level of perfection, these details, these exteriors. So is every smallest detail now perfect? The customized leather luggage, the air intakes that evoke a supersonic jet, the mirrors inspired by a woman's eye, the carbon fiber like a tailored suit. Inside, the leather with the soft feel of a lady's handbag, the intricate aluminium gear shift, the buttons inspired by a clarinet, the dials produced by a Swiss watchmaker. Everything is machined and then finished by hand because the artist's hand gives the added value that the machine, while accurate, cannot give. So after eight years of development, over a million kilometers of testing, endless design and redesign, and collaborators pushed to new limits. It's all come down to this. The moment that Terrazio Pagani must decide if his masterpiece is complete and he's ready to share his creation with the world. Will 60 buyers finally get their cars? Or is the pursuit of perfection a road without an end?